Hello. In this video, I provide a general overview of Poisson regression and how to carry out a basic analysis using SPSS. A link for the data that is used, as well as this PowerPoint, will be made available for download underneath the video description. Additionally, a running document containing links to other videos on Poisson regression and using other programs will be made available as well. So let's start off with our overview. Poisson regression is a technique that is used to predict count outcomes with those counts occurring within a, within a given space or span of time. Oftentimes, the observed counts reflect low frequency events. Unlike OLS regression, Poisson regression does not assume normally distributed residuals with constant variance. It also does not assume a linear relationship between the independent variables and the dependent variables as is required using OLS regression. Now since the Poisson distribution becomes increasingly normal as the expected value of the distribution increases, OLS regression can be a reasonable approach to predicting count outcomes when the counts on the dependent variable involve larger integer values, just so long as OLS, regress, OLS assumptions of normality and homoscedasticity of residuals is met. When the expected value of the distribution is small, then Poisson regression is more appropriate. Notably, OLS regression involving low frequency count outcomes can produce illogical predicted values on the dependent variable in the form of negative predictive counts. Moreover, modeling low frequency count outcomes with OLS regression can result in downwardly biased standard errors, thereby increasing the likelihood of incorrect inferences. Now, Poisson regression makes the assumption that the conditional mean and variance of the distribution of counts are equal, a condition referred to as equidispersion. In many cases, the variance of a count outcome is greater than the mean, and this is referred to as overdispersion. When this occurs, the Poisson model can underestimate standard errors, leading to increased likelihood of type 1 error. So when over dispersion is a problem, a negative binomial logistic regression may be used, or the analyst might try using a different scaling parameter. Just so you know, when equidispersion is present, the negative binomial distribution will converge onto the Poisson distribution. Sometimes the conditional variance is lower than the conditional mean, which is a condition referred to as under dispersion. The effect of under dispersion is to inflate standard errors, thereby reducing the power of tests of the regression coefficients. So Osborne suggests that respecifying the scaling parameter can be used to address this problem as well. Never, nevertheless, it would seem that researchers tend to be more concerned with issues of over dispersion as opposed to under dispersion in their treatments of Poisson regression. Frequently, Poisson regression is used when counts have been made within a fixed period of time. Uh, so in other words, the measurement period has the same length for all cases. However, in situations where counts are made over varying periods of time, then it becomes necessary to control for differences in the length of the periods in which observations are made. This can be accomplished through the use of an offset variable. In effect, an offset variable is used to account for different levels of exposure associated with the cases under observations, and in SPSS, the offset variable is created by computing the natural log of a variable reflecting the length of the observation period for a case um, and associated with a given count. This variable is then incorporated into the model as a predictor with the regression coefficient fixed at 1. So in this video, we're not going to be using offset, um, offset variables, but uh, this is something to be aware of. Assessing model fit. In general, the first step in assessing model fit is evaluation of the results of the likelihood ratio chi-square test. The likelihood ratio test is used to evaluate whether the model containing the full set of predictors represents a significant improvement in fit over a null or intercept only model. When the likelihood ratio test is statistically significant, this means that the model is a significant improvement in fit relative to the null. Only when this model is significant do you proceed to evaluation of each of the regression coefficients in order to determine those predictors that contribute significantly to the model. There are two basic tests of the regression coefficients in a Poisson regression model, the wall test and likelihood ratio test. A limitation of the wall test is that it can be overly conservative when it comes to testing the regression coefficients against the null. The likelihood ratio test is a more powerful test of regression parameters. It involves testing the full model, including a given predictor, against a re reduced model without that predictor. If the decrease in fit 
uh, through removal is statistically significant, then this indicates the predictor is a significant contributor to the model. Okay, so let's begin our example. So with our example, uh, we're going to start with a scenario where you are studying predictors of the number of work days during a 90-day period that employees are absent from work for whatever reason. You obtain data from a sample of 50 employees, and note this is very low for carrying out Poisson regression, but um, this is what we're going to be working with. So you obtain data from a sample of 50 employees on the number of days absent, employee salary, a measure of gender identification which is coded 0 for male, 1 for female, an indicator of whether or not employee is in a managerial position that is coded 0 not manager, one manager, and self-report measures of employee satisfaction and stress associated with their job. And once again, in this demonstration, we will not be using an offset variable. Okay, so this is the data set opened up in SPSS. So you can see that we have the number of days absent, stress, work satisfaction, gender identification, manager, and salary. So again, manager is coded zero for not a manager, one for uh, manager. Gender ID is coded zero for male, one for female identification. Uh, work satisfaction and stress are being treated as continuous predictors and number of, of days absent is our uh, discrete count outcome. So what we're going to do is go up to analyze, go to generalized linear models and click on this button right here. And under this, we're going to click on Poisson log linear. So we're underneath where it says counts, that's where we're clicking right here. Next, we'll click on response and let me just kind of reset this so you can see it all take place. We're going to move number of days absent over to the dependent variable box. We'll click under the pr predictors tab and move our predictors over as well to the covariates box. You'll notice that um, you know gender ID and manager are both um, dichotomous variables but they're already both dummy coded variables so there's no need to kind of treat them as factors or anything of that nature. So we're just going to leave these as covariates uh, right here. Um, if we had a uh, variable, uh, a factor variable with more than two levels and we were, didn't have the uh, coding already set at dummy coding, we, then we might treat it as a fa factor in the top box. Next we'll click on model and we will click on all of our variables. We'll go ahead and move them over. Under estimation we'll leave that pretty much where it's at. And then under this box right here you'll notice that we have the walled chi-square which is noted. Uh, this is the default. If we want the likelihood ratio test we can click on this one right here but we're going to stick for this uh, part of the demonstration on using the wall test which is the first one. And then we're going to click on include exponential parameter estimates down at the bottom. So I'm going to click that as well and then we'll click on OK and we end up with our results. So this is our output file. You'll see we have goodness of fit um, measures. We've got an omnibus test. This is a likelihood ratio chi-square test. Uh, and then we also have the test of model effects and parameter estimates and so forth. Okay, so let's go through some of our output. So first, the goodness of fit measures in this table can be useful for both model comparison and for evaluating the presence of over-dispersion and under-dispersion. According to Payne and Osborne, departures from equidispersion can be assessed by computing the ratio of the deviance to its, stand, to its degrees of freedom and or forming a ratio of the Pearson chi-square to its degrees of freedom. So values greater than 1 indicate the presence of over-dispersion, whereas values less than 1 signal the presence of under-dispersion. As you can see, uh, where we have the column that says value divided by degrees of freedom. So uh, Field suggests that over-dispersion is most likely to be problematic when the ratio of the chi-square to its degrees of freedom is greater than 2. On the other hand, Payne suggests um, that a chi-square degrees of freedom ratio of 1.2 is it should be a threshold for moving from the use of a Poisson model to a negative binomial model. So in this particular demonstration you can see that both of these values, the uh, deviance divided by the degrees of freedom and Pearson chi-square divided by its degrees of freedom are less than one, suggestive of potentially under dispersion. This is the likelihood ratio chi-square test aimed at testing whether the model containing the full set of predictors fits significantly better than a null model which is basically an intercept only model and so if this result is significant then we would say that our model is a significant improvement in fit and that appears to be the case in this particular output. 
Okay, so the table of parameter estimates uh, gives us our regression slope, standard errors, uh, test values, and so forth. So the regression slope is interpreted, and by the way, the regression slope is found right here in the table. This is a standard error, uh, wall chi-square value, p-value. This right here is the incidence rate ratio. But the regression coefficient uh, in the B column is interpreted as a predicted change in the log count for every one unit increase on the predictor, controlling for the remaining predictors. Although the units we are working with when interpreting the regression slopes is log count, we can state generally that a positive coefficient indicates that as scores increase on a predictor, the predicted incidence rate or the count uh, increases on the dependent variable. On the other hand, a negative coefficient is going to indicate that the predicted incidence rate decreases on the dependent variable with increasing values on the predictor. The incidence rate ratio is found in the EXPB column and represents the predicted change in the incidence rate per unit increase on a predictor. So a value of 1 indicates that with increasing scores on the predictor, the incidence rate changes by a factor of the uh, incidence rate ratio. A value less than 1 indicates that with increasing scores on the predictor, the incidence rate decreases by a factor of that incidence rate ratio. So let's look at interpreting our results. So in the model, salary was a negative and significant predictor of the incidence rate for the number of days absent from work. The incidence rate ratio suggests that for every one unit increase on the predictor, the predicted increase uh, incidence rate changes by a factor of 0.928. So this is what we were looking at right there. There's the incidence rate ratio. There is our um, regression coefficient again our standard error for salary uh, and the wall chi-square. The regression coefficient for manager which now we're looking at this um, line right here let me just kind of clean this up a bit uh, for manager uh, was non-significant and similarly the regression slope for gender ID which we have right here um, was uh, non-significant as well so it's basically indicating no difference in predicted incidence rate between persons identified male and, and female. Next, the regression coefficient for work satisfaction was negative, suggestive that employees scoring higher on work satisfaction are more likely to exhibit a lower incidence rate for absences than employees scoring lower on the measure. Nevertheless, work satisfaction was not significant at the conventional .05 level. Um, the incidence rate ratio would indicate that for every one unit increase on work satisfaction, the predicted incidence rate changes by a factor of 1.1. Um, actually, uh, I had to make a little bit of a correction there. Uh, the incidence rate ratio for work satisfaction indicates that for every one unit increase on work satisfaction, the predicted incidence rate changes by a factor of 0.94. Finally, the regression coefficient for stress was positive and statistically significant, indicating that employees scoring higher on stress were perceived to have uh, are, uh, were predicted to have a higher rate of absenteeism than those scoring lower on stress. The incidence rate ratio indicates that for every one unit increase on work satisfaction, the predicted incidence rate changes by a factor of 1.062. So uh, let me also note that the regression parameters in the parameter estimates table are tested using only the walled test. That's the default. Unfortunately, this test can be overly conservative. An alternative is the likelihood ratio chi-square test, which tests whether the removal of the specific predictor from the model would increase and this would re result in a significant decrease in fit. So you can see under the generalized linear models option, this is what I was showing you earlier, uh, that the default was walled test, but here I've clicked on likelihood ratio uh, test. And so when we get our output, you'll notice that now we have, again, with our parameter estimates, we still have down here the walled chi-square test, but now over here under test of model effects, we have the likelihood ratio chi-square. And you can see that pretty much um, the, uh, the results were not very different between the two, but there are circumstances where uh, the different tests can lead to uh, different conclusions about the model parameters. 
Okay, so that pretty well concludes our discussion. Uh, the last page of this um, PowerPoint contains references and resources. Uh, be sure to check them out. Uh, I think I put some, some good ones up there uh, for you to follow up with. So if you find this video and materials useful, please take time to like the video and share it with others. Also, please consider subscribing to receive information on new videos that I upload. Again, thanks for watching.